How secure is our salvation? Spiritual pride. Can there be such a thing as spiritual pride? Many believe they have reached a point in their Christian experience that nothing can bother them. Not once saved, always saved. That is a lie of the enemy. We need to be very careful about that. Again, thank you for joining us once again here at Behold the Lamb. You heard already about the, the title of the subject, Once Saved, Always Saved. Now, it either is a biblical truth or it's not a biblical. We say it's an untruth. So we're going to look at that closely in Scripture today, and we're going to spend this uh, thoughtful hour on this subject that I believe will be a real blessing because remember, if it is a truth, praise God for it. If it's not a truth, it needs to be exposed from the Word of God because I think maybe many, many, many people believe in this subject. So before always that we uh, present the Bible, before we open up the pages of this beautiful book, we pray. And I'm, I'm just, I'm believing that you're praying at home, and I'm going to be praying right here. I'm going to kneel and ask God's blessing upon His Word. So let's pray together, shall we? Loving Father in heaven, truly we thank you for your love and your mercy. Now we invite thy Holy Spirit. Lord, what an important subject this is. We pray that our hearts and minds will be open, that we may receive this teaching from the Holy Spirit. Bless us, we pray. Now may the things of earth go strangely dim as we sit at your feet. We pray that you will speak, and so we may hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, make sure you have your Bible and pencil and papers out, everything, so you can jot down. There's a lot of information to cover. I doubt that we get through, you know, we're just, again, touching on the edges. Once saved, always saved. A uh, very familiar uh, verse in the Bible, and I want us to remember, and this was our scripture reading, and that's found in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Now, remember, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, this was put there in the Bible for, uh, for a reason. For a reason, and you'll notice as we again go over it, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh, what? That he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Because there's a lot of people who say, oh, that no matter what the devil throws at me, it doesn't matter. You know, we're going to beat the devil up. Well, remember, we need to be very careful about the statements that we make. Certainly, we serve a God that is able, and I think in this study that we'll go through and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, God wants us to be saved. He wants us in the kingdom. He's made every preparation that we can be there, and salvation can be assured to His people. But how far do we go with that assurance? Do we go farther than God has wanted us to go, or do we go as far as He wants us to go? In once saved, always saved. You know, Scripture warns us always as we read to be on guard that we are not deceived. Over and over, right, you read in the Word, what does it say? Especially in Matthew 24, don't be deceived. Some of the first words Jesus spoke to the disciples when they wanted to know if His coming and what would take place. He said, be careful that you're not deceived. Because He knew the enemy would be out to do what? To deceive, or the enemy would be out and take a, a, a truth in the Bible, and then he would what? He would change it just a little bit so that it would deceive people into thinking maybe that they are a little bit better than they are. Or maybe they just don't need any help. Everything is all right because many years ago they gave their heart to God. Interesting when you think about it. Many believe they have reached a point in their Christian experience that nothing can bother them. Nothing can shake them off of the platform. Have you ever met someone like that? They just, and again, I think we can be positive and sure based on God's Word, but there's stipulations, I believe, and I, I believe we'll find as we study it together. You know, is, is there such a thing, this is a question, is there such a thing as, uh, oh, I'm not living, and I've heard people say it, I'm not living as I should, but I believe if something happens, I'll make it to heaven. You ever heard anyone say something like that? I'm not, I'm, I'm not living the way that I know I should. But I believe that I will be able to make it to heaven. right? Because, well, because I was saved when I was 12. I'm 55 now. You follow me. I'm 55 now. I'm not living the way that I should. I know what the Bible says. But I believe I'll be saved because I was when I was 12. Is that really biblical? Is that really a teaching from the Word of God? Can it be misleading? And a lot of people reach for it because it sounds good. It feels good. In other words, I don't necessarily have to match up to anything to make heaven my home, but it's going to be my home because I really did give my life to him many years ago. Wow. Huh. 
spiritual pride. Can there be such a thing as spiritual pride? I mean, every one of you have met someone who's had spiritual pride, and we pray that we never have that spiritual pride. You know, it, why? It leads to something that's very, very dangerous. It's self-confident. Huh. Self-confidence. I, well, I believe. What? Confidence in self and not in God. Romans eleven twenty says this. It says, Thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. I thought that was interesting. The Bible here is given admonition. Do not be high-minded. That means don't be arrogant, even in spiritual things. Don't be a know-it-all in spiritual things. If we understand God, we understand heaven, understand the Word just a little bit, we'll realize there's a whole lot that we don't know, much more than we don't know, than we know. And then what we know, we think we know, it's very just scratching the edges, and we'll be learning through all eternity. So we don't want to be high-minded, the Bible says, but fear. I can think of one individual, and many in Scripture, we'll just give one illustration because of our time, I think of, of Nebuchadnezzar. Do you remember that? Habakkuk 2.4 just simply says this. Faith cannot live in a man whose soul is lifted up. Faith cannot what? Faith cannot live in a soul, right? In, in one who's what? Who's lifted up. And we think of Nebuchadnezzar, do we not? In, in, uh, in Daniel chapter 5, verse, uh, what is it, 20? It says his heart was lifted up. And then he had to be what? He had to be humble. We need to be careful in our relationship with Christ, that we do not get lifted up and that we know everything. You know, I, I, many, many years ago as we were starting out in, in uh, just, you know, given, still in construction, giving Bible studies, one of my greatest fears was this, that somebody would ask me a question I did not have an answer for. Hello? Yeah, I didn't have, I don't know if any of you ever went through that or not. I'm afraid somebody's going to ask something I don't know. But you know, the Lord gives you what? Give you wisdom on those things to simply say you will not always have the answer. Some people come from so many different dif directions that's not even a biblical direction. How can you have a biblical answer? And so the, the Lord says to me, can he, you know, the next best thing to knowing the answer is what? Is where to find it. The next best thing from knowing the answer is what? Where to find it. So when they ask me a question I didn't know, I say, I don't know, but I know the Bible has it, and we're going to go to the Word of God, and we're going to find that answer. So therefore, we need not be afraid as long as we're digging in the Word of God. John 5, 39 says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And what? They are they which testify of me. The Scriptures testify of Jesus Christ. You want to have eternal life. You say, I'm reading the Scriptures. I think I want to, I'm going to have eternal life. I'm giving my life to Him. How safe, how secure is our salvation? Is there anything really wrong in believing once saved, always saved? Christ Object Lesson 154 says this. I'm hurrying. Notice this. Pride and self-sufficiency of all sin is the most helpless and most incurable. Only one way huh, that you can trace the knowledge of self. We must behold Christ. Any man, woman, child in this life that's called, oh, oh they do righteous things, everything is all good. They need, oh, my, my, think about this. If we look to Christ and we're really beholding Christ, we can never say that. We can never take anything, any credit, we say, for things that God and the Holy Spirit is doing. How can we empty ourselves of self quickly? How can we? Is it possible, and the Bible talks about empty ourselves of self, isn't that right? Is it possible we can empty ourselves of self just like Jesus did? I'm going to tell you that we cannot. Not on our own. We cannot accomplish that. All we can do is simply to consent to the Holy Spirit working in us just like Jesus did so that he could carry out the work his father asked him to do. We have to consent to let the Savior in to do the work. We can glory, and when we glory, it has to be in the cross. Galatians 6, 14. You have nothing to glory in. I have nothing to glory in. I don't care how many of my people toot your horn or they don't toot your horn. We have nothing to glory here in this life, only the cross of Calvary. This is where it's all out. This is where there's power. 
I'm going to turn and read the passage. That's three minutes. This is why we talk about once saved, always saved. If you get to, to this in the book of Ezekiel right here, you're going to see beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know we won't get as far as we wanted to get, but notice this. Ezekiel chapter 18. I'm going to read verses 4 and 20, and then get, I'll tell you the verses as we go as quick as I can with our time. I want you to understand this, first of all, in Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Run, one line simply says, Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father and soul. Then it says here, the soul that sinneth, it shall what? It shall die. Verse 20, notice that. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. It's repeated again. In verse 21, notice this. But if the wicked, notice this, will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep my statues and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Did you get that? If the wicked do what? If they repent, isn't that right? They keep, remember, there's condition. If the wicked then turn to Christ, Keep his statutes, do the lawful, that which is right, he shall live and not die. Verse 22. All of his transgression that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Sinner comes, ask forgiveness, what? He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. We have to walk in his will and his way. Notice about the once saved, always saved. Again, verse 24. But when the righteous, because people say this, there's no way. I gave my life to Christ. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm righteous. I've done everything right. And, and if, you, if you're righteous and you give your life to Christ, you can't fall. And then they say, well, that they, after 10 years of living a righteous life, they went out into the world and they'll say, well, they wasn't saved anyway. That's not biblical. You're not the judge. Notice what the Bible says. And when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, when the righteous does what? Turns away from his righteousness and committeth what? Sin? Iniquity and doth according to all the abominations the wicked man doeth, shall he live? Question mark. All the righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned. In them what? He shall die. Verse 36, again, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness. There you go right here. Once saved, always saved, doesn't fit. It says, when the righteous man, that means the man that's doing right, the man that once gave his life to Jesus Christ, but he decides he wants to do his own thing, and he goes out in the world of sin. He committeth iniquity, he dies in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from the wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Wish we had time to go to Ezekiel chapter 3. We do not. Read verses 20 and 21. It reiterates what we're talking about here. Plus, it goes into saying we have a responsibility to warn the person who has slipped away from Christ. But notice what it is. When the righteous man turns away from doing righteous and he commits sin and he doesn't make a change, he will die in that sin. Not once saved, always saved. That is a lie of the enemy. We need to be very careful about that. May God help each and every one to say we need to keep our eyes on Christ. We need to go look at the Word of God and find out what truth really is. And don't accept a counterfeit by the enemy to make you feel you're a lot better off than you are when the Bible says no. If we are Christ, we're going to live for Him. Isn't that wonderful to know that? That's a decision that we all have to make today. I know we're done today. I'm just going to close with this. Just a short prayer, if you don't mind. Let's close prayer together because I know there's people today that are saying they're upset. They don't want to hear these kind of things. But you know what? It's a beautiful truth from God's Word. I'm thankful. We can, we can be assured of our eternal salvation. We can be assured because of what Jesus has done. But that we have to continue to walk in that way. Continue to walk and He will guide. Let's pray, shall we? Loving Father in heaven, thank you for your Word. Thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you that by going to the Word of God, we can find out what truth is and also we can find the counterfeits of the enemy. Bless us, we pray. Those who have made that choice and decision today say, ooh, I may have been believing the wrong thing. Now I'm going to make that change. It's very important to follow in his footsteps. In Jesus' name, amen.